This sphere costs $2.3 billion, and I'm going to find out why. The sphere is here. This is the largest spherical structure in the world. It's impossible to describe. It's like trying to explain what a peanut butter and jelly sandwich tastes like to somebody who's never tasted one. Whoa. But he's right. Nobody knows what this thing is. And the people that are talking about it, let's be honest, are most likely being paid to do so. I kind of want an honest review. I want someone maybe who isn't paid. I'll be investigating three of the biggest claims I've read about the sphere. It's like VR with no headset. The audio sounds like you're wearing headphones. There's not a bad seat in the house. Really? I'll be sneaking into every section and giving you my very honest review and ultimately sharing what I think is the best seat in the house. It's time to buy tickets. So the Sphere is a new venue in Vegas that's hosting U2 as their first act for a three month long residency. People are claiming it's like VR because of the massive LED screen that wraps around the inside. And then because there's all these speakers shooting directly at every seat, it supposedly feels like a headphone experience. Which makes you wonder like how much are these tickets and how hard are they to find? I'll be in Vegas in a couple of weeks. I cannot get tickets. I found tickets immediately. Tomorrow, Wednesday, October 11th, 8 p.m. MSG Sphere. It's also kind of ironic that the Sphere is owned by Madison Square Garden. Okay, $505 for nosebleeds. And it's just getting more expensive. Oh my goodness. Now we're gonna go down to the pit. This has to be the most expensive because you're inches away from Bono himself. 331. It would be irresponsible for me to buy this. Watch me buy, watch me buy an overpriced ticket that I should not, but it's cheaper than any other. So I feel a little less self conscious about this decision. A little less self conscious about this decision. Vegas! The Whitney City, baby! The gas station had a Popeyes next to it. Little win, huh? Peace out, Popeyes! Thanks for the memes. That's just nice. I'm pulling into Vegas right now. I feel like I'm about to see the sphere for the very first time. I'm like really excited. I see it, I see, I, I see a, a, a sliver of it. It is so massive, but I wanted to see it from a thousand feet up. I didn't know Vegas had a drone height limitation. So we are 38 feet up with a great view of the power lines. So I found a parking deck pretty close by because I wanted to get like a proper view. Back to the camera sphere, come on. Yeah. I know, I know. Oh, there it is. Okay, we're on the ground floor. Headed to the sphere as we speak. I'm right here, by the way. I don't know if I'm in the frame, but here's a few things I've done so far. Number one, I've done a lap around the whole place. I'm the youngest person here. Number two, the lines are crazy. People are, are constantly stopping and bumping into each other because everyone's so distracted looking up. Three, I have no idea if all these cameras are gonna get in. Specifically this 360 camera, a 20 foot long selfie stick, and a lav mic. I'm uncertain about that. Four, I finally understand why they call Vegas the Windy City. Gotta love it. It was time to get in line and test my luck. I did get to see the LEDs up close, which was kind of cool. After making some friends in line, I went through security and they immediately grabbed all my gear. Is that as strong as it gets? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they weren't psyched about it. She ended up calling the head of security and as she did that, I thought I probably should have tried to hide the cameras instead of just walking in with them. The supervisor ended up telling her that. It's not I was kind of bummed because I wanted you guys to have a 360 experience. Then I had to go all the way back to my car, drop everything off. But on my way back in, I put the 360 camera in my pocket. And I guess that's all I had to do from the beginning. We all know I'm here in a mission to find the best seat in the house, but you guys have to see this place.
understand why people said it felt like VR. They did this Matrix visual thing that made me feel like I was Keanu. I'm not Keanu. I'm just Preston. And I'm also very easily distracted. So because I was there on a mission, I had to get out of there. I'm gonna be honest, there is no part of me that wanted to leave the pit. I'm gonna go try and find my way into different sections. I talked to a security guard who said that was actually impossible because of the level of security. I gotta try. I'll begin by attempting to go from the pit to level one. I pretended to drink from the water fountain waiting for the staff elevator doors to open. Once they did, I made a run for it. This guy didn't ask one question, which I was kind of surprised about. And all of a sudden I was on level one. Oh, blue lights, cool. Look for an entrance, look for an entrance. There's an entrance, no security guard. Be cool, walk briskly. Still no security guard. Okay, I guess I will walk down into the aisle. Oh my gosh, this is kind of working. Be cool, don't show excitement. No, 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 no. Emotionally, I am wherever this guy is, but I'm here to collect data. Right off the bat, it's clear this is a great view of the stage, but the animation that they were playing made it not necessarily feel like VR. Next, I tried to assess if the audio did sound like headphones, but then this guy kicked me out. A win nonetheless, and it was time for level two. Up we go. I was pretty hungry, so I went to the concession stand and asked the cashier if the menu had any, any winners. I think he thought I said wieners. Three out of 10, worst part of the night so far. The guy checking tickets didn't really seem to care that I was walking in, which made me think like, are there any rules here? Because I'm having a great time. I found an empty seat, enjoyed myself for a second, and then began collecting data. I first realized that this is not level two, it's level three, I got lost. The second thing I'm realizing was at this point in the show, they're using the LED screen way less. So when they projected light at it, you could see each LED panel, which kind of like broke the illusion for me. Let's be honest though, I'm having a great time no matter what, just exploring this place. I make it up to the fourth level, the tippy top overlooking the whole thing, and they start doing this lightning animation, and it, I mean, it was crazy. Three levels down, one to go. So I feel like, I feel like- Tacos! Tacos! These tacos really redeemed my hot dog experience and really made level two just so enjoyable for me. The entire 18 seconds I was there. So now that my understanding of the sphere was well-rounded, I went back to the pit to draw my final conclusions, which actually solidified a lot. So right as I get there, they put up the sky animation and the band stops. All of a sudden, I hear the most realistic helicopter sound I've ever heard. Now, most likely that's not gonna sound realistic to you unless you're in the room. The only thing I can compare it to is what it feels like to hear those super realistic door knocking sounds. If you have headphones, put them in now to get the full effect. Oh, wait a second. You ready? Okay, great. So for maybe two and a half seconds, my brain was tricked, honestly, into believing that those were real helicopters. So when it comes to the first claim about the sphere feeling like virtual reality, I agree. The headphone claim I'm going to agree with kinda, the sound was great, but I don't know if it was that great. The third claim about no bad seats, I'm just gonna disagree with. There were some bad seats. It's okay, this place doesn't have to be perfect. Because there is one seat that I would say is the best seat in the house. And that title goes to the pit. Specifically the middle pit. I know I didn't think I was gonna say this either. Here's why. There's something about standing in a crowd with people that makes the whole environment more believable for some reason, which I wouldn't have expected. And in the middle, you get the least amount of distortion from the screens. And it's also the cheapest option, which is a win as well. But there was one more question that I had to ask. What do you think they'll close with? What do you think they'll close with? Will they close with Street, street 79? No, the last song will be beautiful day. Oh my god, of course. Of course. Beautiful slave.